Uh, I have been using this technology uh, for many years now. Um, my uh, center uh, in Seattle was one of the first 15 sites um, approved to use, uh, use this technology. Uh, so overall, I, I have treated um, probably close to 30 patients or even more uh, if I include the clinical trial that, I, uh, that our center participated in. Um, overall, my experience with the device um, was good. Um, uh, most of the patients that uh, I prescribed the device to uh, were um, successful in terms of um, being able to use it, um, being able to be compliant. Um, I did, however, have few patients uh, that uh, couldn't really tolerate uh, the, uh, the device, uh, mostly because of the fact that they had to uh, wear it. Um, uh, basically 24-7 and uh, to some of them it, it felt a little confining um, and it was also in sort of to, to sort of quote their words it was it was a reminder uh, to them of the fact that they, they are sick that they have the, the brain tumor um, but this was a minority of the patients in, in most cases um, patients embraced the technology and, and have used the device uh, consistently right. So my, uh, my greatest success um, is treating a, a young uh, woman in her 40s with, uh, with glioblastoma uh, who um, failed um, prior treatments. Um, she uh, had a lot of side effects associated with um, uh, both uh, cytotoxic chemotherapy uh, as well as uh, monoclonal antibodies such as bevacizumab. Um, and we were um, really faced with either stopping all the treatments or trying uh, tumor treating fields um, as a single modality, and we did. Um, the patient uh, was very compliant with the treatment. Um, she has been uh, using it now for almost three years, um, again, as a single uh, uh, treatment modality, and she, she remained stable. Uh, uh, her most recent MRI didn't show um, uh, tumor progression, and um, it's, it's really you know, very encouraging to see that. Um, that um, this technology can help patients who cannot otherwise have other uh, treatment options, uh, like this woman um, who developed all these complications from, from prior treatments. Uh, so I think that's my, my greatest success story uh, in terms of the length of treatment and also patients' um, compliance and, and sort of attitude towards the, uh, this technology. So my experience was using Doptio now spent a number of years because we have embraced it from the time that the device was approved for recurrent glioblastoma. And we have treated probably around 100 patients with this device in our practice at University of California, Irvine. We have many success stories of uh, uh, people going for years on the device and including patients that should they have participated on the year 14 study, they will be on the long-term survivor cohort. It, in my experience, once uh, the device is accepted by the patient, it is not an imposition on the patient's life, and patients adapt to it, and they do a lot of their activities. Uh, one of my very nice patients come to my mind, and she is actively traveling, taking cruises, going biking, and because the device is so small and so portable, she can do all of those things wearing the device. And now we are looking at uh, her being um, in uh, having a great tumor response and maintaining that great tumor response for uh, almost two years. At Tufts Medical Center, we probably have the oldest surviving patient um, who has used the device. And uh, we had put 17 patients on the trial. And um, 10 of them were randomized to device with Temidor radiation, and the other uh, seven were randomized just to tender on radiation. Of, the, of, all, of 16 of those patients, the seven, everybody's tumor came back except for the one guy who never took the device off his head. Nine of the patients who were randomized to the device, either the tumor came back or the trial basically was completed after two years and they took it off their head. Well, this one gentleman who was, you know, very, very determined, he decided that he was going to continue it on. And he has, and he still does now, seven years later. And all I've been able to tell him that of the 17 people we've been in the trial, he is the only one uh, that the tumor has never come back. And so when, when he asked me, when can I take it off my head? I said, I don't know when you can take it off your head because you're the only one who never took it off their head and you're the only one whose tumor never came back. 
And you, and you know what he asked me in response to that was what? Why did other people take it off their head? He couldn't understand why anybody, you know, if it was helping them or if they thought it was helping them, why would they take it off? So I'm, I'm faced with that when I talk to my new patients because they're like, well, the trial was two years. It's now commercially available. How long should we do it? I said, you're going to have to make that decision yourself. I say, we've proven in the trial two years. Definitely, I would do it. After that, all I can say is that the other nine patients, when they took it, you know, of everybody else that got the device, the tumor did come back. I can't say that's going to be it, that's going to be the situation for you, but you you can make that decision in two years on your own. So based on the data that we just discussed and the FDA approval at the end of 2015 for newly diagnosed patients, and the previous approval for recurrent disease. We recommend the device for both categories of patients. Uh, the difference is that uh, the FDA approval uh, for the device in uh, uh, newly diagnosed patients is as a combination therapy, while the FDA approval for the recurrent patients is a single therapeutic modality. The device is approved, FDA approved, for both newly diagnosed and recurrent GBMs. And the recurrent GBM uh, trial, uh, which was the EF11 trial, which I also participated in at another institution, Beth Israel in Boston, um, was approved first. So that was when we ran the newly diagnosed trial, some of the patients in the newly diagnosed trial, when they recurred, uh, if they were in the control arm, w did basically, basically essentially drop out of the trial and then uh, get the device. So it becomes this sort of interesting phenomenon that we have the approval for both in the United States. And so what I've been telling people is I give it to them up front, and I have to say I do give a hard sell uh, based on uh, the results, and you're going to hear more about the results uh, about the EF, the final analysis. But essentially uh, what happened at the two-year overall survival in people that got uh, Temidar and the Optune was 43% versus 30% in the patients that just got the Temidar alone. So that's about a 50%, if you think about it, approximately a 50% increase in survival. That's huge. So I give a big, hard sell up front. So when it comes back in the recurrent setting, I give even a bigger hard sell about now is the time to do it. So based on the recent uh, data, I uh, recommend that uh, the device is used in newly diagnosed setting in combination with um, temozolomide um, after initial treatment with radiation. Um, in recurrent disease patients, uh, it's, of course it's approved, but it's sort of case by case, uh, depending again on uh, what is the patient's individual situation, uh, what the progression looks like, what kind of uh, drugs have they been on uh, before. Uh, so of, of course we discuss it, um, but not every patient um, embraces the, the use of the device uh, at the first recurrence. Um, some patients uh, feel like they might want to try it, but they feel that they would like to try other options first. Um, and so usually other chemotherapy agents before they try um, tumor treating fields. Uh, so I think that that's sort of the, 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 you know, in my practice I offer this uh, to patients, but, uh, but most of the patients at the recurrent setting uh, typically uh, want to try something else before they go to tumor treating fields. In newly diagnosed patients, um, again, based on the very strong data that we have, um, a lot of patients are, um, are interested. Not everybody actually does it, um, but I would probably say in, in my practice, um, probably maybe 60% of patients would uh, uh, consider using it up front, um, uh, and then 40% uh, still somewhat reluctant to use it uh, and want to just do temozolomide alone.